Welcome to London. Welcome to the History Lord. You join me here today in a bit of a noisy Cheapside. And today we're going to be talking about the son of Gilbert and Matilda Beckett. He was Thomas Beckett, Archbishop of Canterbury. Now what we're going to do, because it's a little bit noisy around here, there's building work around the corner, and we've got buzzers going off behind us and people moving things, we're going to go to St Mary Le Beau, just down the road at Cheapside, and talk about him there. He was educated at Merton Priory, and then back in the city of London, and then off to Paris. At the age of 24, he secured his first appointment, and that was under Theobald of Beck, who was the Archbishop of Canterbury. He became the Archdeacon of Canterbury. And because he did such a good job, in January 1155, he was appointed Chancellor under Henry II. He became great friends with Henry II. In fact, they went hunting together and they did lots of carousing together as well. And he led a rather opulent life. By this time, Henry and Becket were such great friends that when Henry II went on a tour of France, he left Thomas Becket in charge of the country, an honour usually reserved for either the king's sons or one of his most senior dukes. When Theobald of Beck died in 1161, Henry II had the wonderful idea of making Thomas Becket Archbishop of Canterbury. He had the idea that Thomas Becket would be an ally and he would align the church with the monarchy. Becket wasn't actually too keen on the idea and actually warned Henry that it would actually ruin a friendship. Nevertheless, Henry made Becket Archbishop of Canterbury in 1162. Becket really did change. He left his opulent lifestyle and actually became more monastic and had a simple lifestyle, taking on the roles of a monk. That was him escaping. After becoming Archbishop, the quarrels started between the King and Becket, so much so that in 1164 Becket was in exile for six long years. He came back to Canterbury in 1170 and large crowds gathered to welcome him enthusiastically. By this time he carried out a number of excommunications of the King's friends and the King was becoming more and more upset with Becket's actions. It's unsure whether Henry II actually did say the words, who will rid me of this turbulent priest, but whether he did or not, four knights in his court took him quite literally that he wanted Becket gotten rid of. They travelled down to Canterbury and on the 29th of December 1170 they confronted Becket in his own cathedral. They asked him to repent and to withdraw his comments. He refused and they murdered him on the spot. Soon after his death in 1170, many people in Europe wanted him made a martyr. His shrine in Canterbury became one of the places for pilgrimage for many hundreds of years after his death. Becket was made a saint by Pope Alexander III in 1173. Now you can still see remnants of his house, well not his house, but there are a few plaques, there's a blue plaque, there's one here, there's also a bust up there, but I think it's appropriate that the place where he was born is now a shoe shop that's called Churches. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching today, we do hope you enjoy these videos, if you do please hit subscribe, and if you want to know when videos are uploaded there is a notification bell just down below. And if you want to see what we do outside of these videos please have a look down below for the description of James's Last Line YouTube channel and have a look at my website which is historylord.co.uk. Thanks for watching and we'll see you very soon. Take care.